Hello everybody, it's Lazel here with another Magic the Gathering Arena video. Today we are playing an Esper Counter 10 deck because we are about to win with Infect. It's a mechanic that got introduced to the standard format with the Phyrexia All Will Be One set and I am reviving this mechanic a little bit because actually most of these cards here are all of the out of the Phyrexia or will be one set. So let's get over with the cards. Billia Skull Dweller, great card. It always has been in draft. One mana, one one, Death Dutch and Toxic One. Great card to enable it and also great card if you want to go for some traits. Scribe Scythe, an enchantment that says at the beginning of your upkeep, you lose one life and create a one one colorless Phyrexian might artifact creature token with Toxic One and this creature can't block corrupted as long as an opponent has three or more poison counters creatures you control with toxic have lifelink this counts for all creatures so it doesn't matter if it is a token creature or a normal creature all of your creatures have lifelink if they have toxic great card experimental augury is the card that you want to play in this deck because you can dig into your deck this is also what the blue stands for in this deck or in this esper combination it's about drawing cards Experimental Augury, instant look at the top three cards of your library, put one of them into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order, and you get to Proliferate. Proliferate is the reason why I do play this card, because this is how we want to win. We want to enable Toxic, or we want to infect our opponent really quickly just with one of our cheap creatures, and then we want to Proliferate to 10 to win the game. Anoint with Affliction, it was a great card in draft and it still is. Exile target creature if it has mana value of 3 or less. And if your opponent is corrupted, which you try to do really quickly, you exile that creature instead if its controller has 3 or more poison counters. So you remove the mana value line from that spell. Go for the Throat as another yeah, helpful card alongside with Anoint with Affliction because destroy target non-artifact creature as an instant. Sometimes it does happen that you don't really accumulate those poison counters on your opponent that fast and they can bring out really strong creatures very quickly. So having go for the throat as an answer if you're not curving out really nicely is great. Then as another toxic enabling creature is the Void Wing Hybrid, Edemia Phyrexian Bat 2-1, Flying Toxic 1. And when you proliferate, return Void Wing Hybrid from your graveyard to your hand. This is a great card and not that easy to interact with, so the only way how your opponents can deal with it is either shut it down with something like a pacifism effect or if they exile it. So currently in the current meta, I think the only card that can really handle it is either the Graveyard Trespasser or also Sunfall or Laid on Arms, for example. And other cards like Brutal Kafar. So there is a lot, but it's not that easy for every deck. Last but not least, when it comes to creatures, we play Annex Sentry, 3 mana, 1-4 Artifact Creature Phyrexian Cleric with Toxic 1. And when it enters the battlefield, Exile Target Artifact or Creature an opponent controls with mana value of 3 or less until Annex Sentry leaves the battlefield. This is some kind of a Brutal Kafar, but it can also target artifacts. But the downside for that is it cares about the mana value because it has to be mana value 3 or less. It's still a toxic creature, which is the reason why I play it. And you can keep your opponent's board in check, especially very powerful against mono red decks because with 4 toughness, it's not that easy to beat instead uh, or compared to a Brutal Kafar. Distorted Curiosity, 3 mana sorcery, which has the corrupted line, which says this spell costs two less to cast if an opponent has three or more poison counters and it simply says draw two cards. You need to draw cards in this deck. You need to keep up with your interaction to get your cheap creatures through. And Distorted Curiosity is definitely a great card to do that. So draw two cards. Raskus Fall. Three mana, instant. Each opponent sacrifices a creature or planeswalker and gets a poison counter. Yes, there is a reason why I should probably play Shieldred's Edict instead. I totally see that. But I want to keep up with the poison theme and I really hope that Raskus Fall yeah, shines in that situation. I do like the fact that Raskus Fall can either target a creature or a planeswalker, which is definitely reasonable with Wandering Emperor, Lydiana of the Veil, vale, all of these cards which are currently in the meta. So Raskus Fall, yeah, I hope it will do some work. I played for the poison and I played for the poison counter over Shiodred's Edict. I think Shiodred's Edict might be better. But yeah, we have so much interaction already on turn two with a Nightwheel Affliction Go for the Throat, which don't apply any poison counters. So I also want to get that curve up, which is why I play Raskus Fall. 
Uh, speaking of which, we have Raska, Betrayed Sting. Six mana, Planeswalker. It has the completed mechanic, so we can pay Phyrexian mana with life. And if we do that, the Planeswalker enters with two fewer loyalty counters. The zero ability, you draw a card and you lose one life. Proliferate. This is the reason why we play Raska here. We want to proliferate our opponent's poison counters up and with that also draw some cards to keep up our interaction. The minus two target creature becomes a treasure artifact with sacrifice this artifact at one mana of any one color and loses all other card types and abilities. Great card to interact with your opponent's creatures depending on what they play and so on. The minus nine is something that I haven't done yet, but it says if target player has fewer than nine poison counters, they get a number of poison counters equal to the difference. Yeah, kind of hard to do if you have a lot of proliferate going on, which we, yeah, we don't really have much proliferate, but with Experimental Augury and Raska, we do have a bit. And who knows, maybe we will get to the point where we can also ultimate her. Last but not least, this time I will also talk a little bit about the mana base. And yeah, I basically threw in every dual land that I do have or also Triumph. So let's start off at the bottom because there is Mirix, a land sphere. That adds one colorless mana and it can also add one mana of any one color. Activate only if Merix entered the battlefield this turn. So this can be a fixing mana when we play it. So we will constantly have to look out for our current mana, uh, mana base that we do have and have play have to play Merix accordingly to what we need. And the last ability, free mana tap it. Create a 1-1 one, one colorless Phyrex and might artifact creature token with toxic one and this creature cannot block. We know these mites and yeah, maybe they will do some work. I do play three Rafine's Towers simply because I do have three. Even though I would have four, I probably would only play three because this is a fast deck with a very cheap curve. So I don't want to have that high chances of only playing Triumphs into it. But I still want to play Rafine's Towers simply because I need to fix for a lot of different colors in this deck. So I'm happy to have it. Fastland, Dark Slick Shores. We continue with Shattered Sanctum from Strixhaven. And yeah, this is a slow land, but it taps for two different mana sources. So great. Caves of Scoilers, the Painland, Seacrom Coast, also the fast land from Phyrexia all will be one. And then we have a few basic and that's yeah basically it. So let's give it a few tries. Let's try if we can count to 10. All right, we got quite a lot of interaction, but I think this is good. Control the board. And then we get Toxic going at some point. Okay, a, a Lone Speaker, so definitely or pretty sure this is going to be the fight rigging deck. So do I want to handle the Lone Speaker now? I think I can wait for Augury to do some work. Okay, gains a life. Another Lone Speaker, okay. Holds priority with the Lone Speaker ability. And we just take it out. Simply because we can. Up to three mana. Alright. So we could risk us fall here and securely kill the Loam Speaker. But I think I want to keep waiting and see what they do. Interesting. Let's see if we can kill the jungle hollow here. Okay, we can. Now they resolve a Quenna. Okay. Gwenna is a problem. But if my opponent ramps into bigger creatures, I'm actually fine with that. Should have gotten Raskus Fall going a little bit earlier here.
Another loam speaker. Okay. It's not a threat yet. Okay. Animates another swamp. Then we will. Yeah, let's gladly take out swamp here. Let's go for Augury here. Ooh. I'll take the Anoint. Okay, back up Braska. Guess I will just take out Gwenna here. Okay, six mana available. Okay. We will take six here. We could go for curiosity and hope to draw like sauce. Or at least a land. Yeah, I didn't do that, so I would take at least another six. Ooh, listen. Yeah, but still taking six here. Okay, draw another land. Like this exile Glissa here. Now we can block and if they animate another land, we can also kill it with go for the throat. Okay, animates pain land. And a forest, so we will take out the forest here. We will just block the pain land. Here we will just Raskus Fall. Make them sacrifice one of their loam speakers. Yeah, they definitely put quite a bit of pressure on us. And then I am fine with attacking back. Apply another Toxic. Oh, there it is. Alright. I really hope that they animate another land before combat. Seems like it. We wait for the fight rigging trigger. Mm, goes for the long speaker. We can take care of long speaker anyways with Raska. can play Raska for six. We will give our opponent a treasure here. Then we will also corrupt our opponent. Gotta watch out a bit because we are at six life. Okay, our opponent didn't draw anything. Let's see what we draw. We go down to five. Proliferate. Yep. Oh, all right. But they don't have much mana. Ooh, that is actually a really good play here. to take it out. Could have also let it resolve and not really care about it. 
Let's cycle our tower here. Draw curiosity, that's good. Okay, two more creatures. So let's bring a hybrid onto the battlefield. Opponent will probably create a token with Nissa now, which we can then exile, but Nissa can also destroy it. Okay, opponent with their own go for the throat. Okay. Raskus fall, okay. Let's see, we can make them sacrifice the token or a planeswalker. That's perfect. So we take out the token here. This way we kill Nissa. Give our opponent another poison counter. We proliferate. Draw a card. Take back our hybrid. Play it out. Bushwhack, okay. Yeah, but that's pretty sure that's it. This game. That was a cool one. Okay, we got lands, we got early game interaction. I like the sand. Okay, no turn one play by our opponent. Let's see if we can get through with our first toxic counter. Poison counter. Yeah, lay down arms. Makes sense. This way we can play planes and get the hype going. Okay, Steel Seraph. That's a good target for some removal here. I could also... Yeah, let's see. I can play Annex Sentry, but if they play another... Um, yeah, but I do have to because Go for the Throat doesn't target the Steel Seraph. So, Paragon. Okay, this one we can target. We will do that. I don't really want to commit too far to the board because I'm pretty sure that if they play Sarah Paragon lay down arms, it's more of a control approach, which means I am afraid of Sunfall. So I would stay back for now. Or we'll also depopulate. The Mightstone and Weakstone. Okay, and this can take out my Annex Sentry. Yeah, makes sense. But I am fine with that because I will just take out... Wait a second. Ah. Mana value is 6. Yeah, prototype mechanic. Forget about that. Vigilance... Create another Might, Raskus Fall, perfect timing, but we have to tap different here, let's see, tap like this, like this, and here we go for Colorless, because uh, Curiosity you will get a discount now, five, and we draw some cards, and also hit our land drop, and now Anoint with Affliction hits everything. Let's see, they do have 7 mana available. Alright, they have seen enough. We are back into Platinum. Really cool. Okay, we are on the draw. We would need Mirex 
to be the black sauce here. I don't really like the sand. This one looks way better. Let's get rid of one Rascal's Fall. Island. So we all know what's about to happen if they play another island. Okay, we all know what we are up against. Come on, you have it. There you go. Mono blue gin. Come on, play the gin. Ah, too bad. There we go, yes. That's what you guys do. Counter spells all day until you have one available to protect your gin. Let's see if we can kill it. Come on, spell gears. No negate, alright. Now first for knowledge or something like that. Nothing. Let's see. Come on. Fading hope, okay. Well, they still get a poison counter. We play Jin. No land. Let's see. Slip out the back. March. Okay. Impulse. The only problem is I don't have any removal left. So let's try to play double bet here. But I am pretty sure that they will counter the last one, yeah. That's a good boy, yeah. Right like this. There we go. Yes. What? You cannot kill me right away? Ah, oh, the ST Tower. We finally killed it. Great. There we go. Yes. Quick game, at least that. Okay, sadly no black. But with Augury on two, I might find something. Let's keep it, it's risky, but. Huh, never punished. We can still augury here. Try to secure more land drops. Okay, so we are up against... Ooh, interesting. Let's see. Let's go with an Annex Sentry. Against the Raven Man. Let's see. Each end step. Create. Okay. Yeah, let's try to be a bit more aggressive this time. If they don't run removal, the sentry can still hit for one toxic. Adeline. Okay. Another great target for an annex sentry. Maybe that's also a little bit too much, because if they wipe the board, they will get back two really good legendary creatures here. So if the populate comes down, oh no, another Raven Man. And Danik, okay. But we at least got go for the throat for Danik here. Then we attack. Corrupt our opponent. Yep, that's great. 
Yeah, due to the fact that we can do it now with a discount, we will just draw cards. And let's play a Skull Dweller. If they are playing Legends, I'm not that sure if they are also running board wipes. Yeah, back up Danek, okay. Otavara is land for turn. Let's see, we draw first. Okay. Draw an untapped land. Let's see what they sacrifice. Probably the Raven Man. But nevertheless, no matter what they sacrifice, it's not a good trade for them. They should go for the Raven Man, yeah, so then it triggers. Then we can hit with all. They might trade for the Skull Dweller here because it's about toxic, it's not about combat damage here. Okay, now all I have to do is keep the pressure up. Maybe I can also proliferate in a way if I find it. Let's see, do we see Sunfall now? Oh, Rona. And Rafine, okay. Rafine is a problem. Let's get Coast out of the way first. We attack. Fly another one. So I don't expect there to be a board wipe, which is why I would just crowd my board here. Press blue. Four mana, so only the populate can save them now. Another Rona, okay, that's two blockers. That will hopefully delay the inevitable. Oh, but Anointable Affliction changes a lot. Yeah, let's take out Rona here. We don't have to pay the ward. Okay. Alright, GG. Okay, we got all the colors we need. We will take a bit of damage from the caves, but it's okay. We can get the hive going second turn, which is also great. Okay, swamp, maybe a cut down. Oh, oh, okay. Artifact or creature card, so they will take sentry here. At least we get to get Toxic going. Alright. Hmm, okay. Now they got her. If it is the mono blue hand hate deck, I can expect a creature drop now. I think they like to play Graveyard Trespasser on turn 2. Lily. That's okay, Raska's Fall, fall also More hits Planeswalkers. Each player discards a card, okay. This can happen. Drop it. Can we take care of her? So I don't have any cards in hand left. This is usually the situation that the mono black deck wants to get into, but yeah, alright. They do have seen enough. That's no spot for them. GG. Alright everybody, these were a few games of my Esport Proliferate Toxic deck. I think this deck is also a lot of fun. But yeah, overall, I think what I do can say, I think definitely the land base needs a lot of improvement. I do like playing free Rafine's Towers, not only because I only have free, but the deck is really cheap. So 
playing with untapped lands is a little bit better in my opinion but still Rafine's Tower hits both three mana sources that we need so that's great. Mirax, yeah fun card cool to play it's a bit hard in a free color deck but it's a very versatile land so it can do some work and the activated ability of creating a might can come up so yeah definitely worth playing all of the fast lands here like Darks, uh, dark slick shores or also sea chrome coast are cards yeah also uh, worth playing in this deck i would like to have a bit more copies of that then cards like caves of scoilos or shattered sanctum not caves of scoilos here but especially shattered sanctum will be cards that will probably cycle out of standard i don't know the real standard rotations but i'm pretty sure that they will cycle out at some point pretty soon and yeah but let's go over the cards again i think skull dweller is such a crazy card it has been a great card in draft already because of death touch toxic one for one one for one mana is just extremely powerful in my opinion yeah the hive did a lot of work it's a cool card what i forgot about this card is again or i have talked about it but the losing one life at the beginning of your turn or in your upkeep yeah, it can hurt quite a bit, so this is also the reason why I'm totally fine with playing only two copies in this deck, because the real win con comes with other cards. Experimental Augury is simply the card that you do play when you want to dig into your deck with this uh, kind of playstyle and the proliferate, the last word is just great. Annoyed Will Affliction, Go for the Throat are great interaction spells for single targets here. Hybrid is probably the best flying creature when it comes to uh, toxic synergies. Of course, there's also Thrumming Bird, but Thrumming Bird has the downside that if it gets answered once, it's answered forever, uh, aside if you reanimate it or something like that. But Hybrid can get back when you proliferate all the time, which is what this deck wants to do pretty often. Annex Sentry, just as in Draft, it's also very powerful in this constructed format. Now we are talking about an artifact creature which can be easily interacted with so i think it's uh, yeah a worse version of brutal kafar but it does the job it has toxic 114 as that line is pretty good in my opinion curiosity even though if you don't get your opponent corrupted it's still a great card and yeah you draw two cards really good especially in this deck here so with augury and curiosity you have your card draw engines really good Reska's Fall is, in my opinion, probably one of the best cards and most synergistic cards in this deck. As we have seen in the last game against Mono Black, this card, yes, yeah, just great. Of course, Geodid's Edict is also very flexible and can target creatures a bit more uh, precisely, or also Planeswalkers, because you can choose the mode. But Reska's Fall, also the additional poison counter that you give to your opponent is really cool. Maybe it's worth trying out Shieldless Edict in here because it's one mana cheaper and it's way more precise when it comes to choosing the targets. But yeah, Reska's Fall, great card. And as a top end card, Reska Betrayed Sting, great card, can curve out nicely, draws your cards, proliferates, does the job, great card, was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed it, see you in the next one.